the iron gates open to the cheering crowd of the Crimson Sand Arena. As two combatants step into the field, you think to yourself, how in the world do I run a duel? Hi there, I'm Luca, and I'm here to show you how to run an epic duel. But first, have you considered subscribing to our channel? Do it. I dare you. So, what are the things we need to make 5v combat more suited for a duel? I think there are three main things we can work on. First, the gameplay has to feel as epic as the duel itself. So no long turns and we have to reveal the whole damage reduction and AC things. Second, we have to diversify the actions your character can perform so that melee combat isn't just reduced to mindlessly attacking. And third, the arena you're playing in has to be a character too. You should have events, a cheering crowd, and even, maybe, traps. At the end, I even have an optional winning condition based on the arena you might like. By the way, if you want a written version of all these rules, check the video description because we have a free PDF guide down below. Okay, let's start gameplay. The first thing I would do to make combat less monotonous and a bit more strategic is using the Speed Factor initiative from DMG page 271. It works like this. Each turn, the combatants announce what they'll do like casting a spell or attacking with a heavier or light melee weapon. This action will factor into their initiative roll. Finally, both sides roll. This doesn't bog down combat because it's only two combatants. Also, it makes you think while you do, and how fast you want to do it. This way, you don't get stuck going second, and the unpredictability may give you an edge. Another thing that's essential to get your gameplay running smoothly, simplify the math. You only have two creatures fighting, so instead of worrying about armor class, Calculate what you need to roll in the dice. You do this by subtracting the 2 hit bonus from the AC and writing that down. Remember to do this for other weapons and spells if this applies. And finally, resistances. This can slow down a duel a lot. If both combatants have resistance to each other's damage, just don't use it. And if one creature will always resist your damage, just double their HP. When you're a melee fighter, attacking every turn of the duel tends to get boring. So we need to add additional options, available to both combatants. For instance, I make Drink in a Potion, Shove, Grapple, Break Grapple, and Search bonus actions, so that your action economy allows you to take non-damage dealing actions without sacrificing your also precious attacks. Also, we'll add a way to prone your enemy. You can use this as an attack action when you're grappling a creature. You make a Strength Athletics check opposed by a Strength Athletics check or a Dexterity Acrobatics check from the creature you're grappling. If you win, they fall prone. Finally, to make the fight more brutal, I use injuries. You can simply use lingering injuries and massive damage from the DMG pages 272 and 273. Or you can go for something a bit less consequential that only lasts until the end of the fight. It works like this. When you hit an attack, you can burn your bonus action to inflict an injury that will last for the duration mentioned on the description or until the end of the duel. The effect you inflict can be chosen from a list. Check out the PDF down below. And you expand your options based on how much damage you can deal compared to the creature's HP. The first here is when you deal one tenth of the creature's HP in a single attack. The second is one fifth and the final is one third of their HP. After each effect is used, it is crossed off from both players' list of choices. You probably notice I changed many things to bonus actions. I think it makes fights go faster and it makes each turn pack a bigger punch. The last thing I like to do is give some personality to our arena. Each arena should be different to the next, so we'll give it a set DC for everything you have to do in there. This will be used for most things, be it impressing the crowd or escaping traps. Make this between 10 and 20 based on how hard you feel it should be. Also, each arena should have a cheer dice based on the dice from the Bardic Inspiration ability. Speaking of impressing the crowd, this can be done by spending a reaction when avoiding attacks using the dodge action and when critting. When you do this, roll a charisma or a strength performance check against the arena DC. If you succeed, you receive one cheer dice that can be used for one ability check, attack roll or saving throw you make during the duel. Additionally, add traps to the arena. The DC to escape them is our very own arena DC, but if you have them, you can spend one sheer dice to automatically succeed. There are a few example traps in the PDF, but if you'd like to do something different, check out the improvised damage and damage severity and level rules in the DMG page 249. This is a great guide to creating traps for your 5e game. And this are the main dual rules. Now, if you want to spice up your games and actually conduct a full-blown gladiator championship, I strongly suggest you consider adding morale rules to your game. It works as a new winning condition. There are three saves you have to make throughout the duel. If you fail all three, you lose. The first two are charisma saving throws. You make them whenever your opponent gets a cheer dice. They're against the arena DC. If you fail the first, your opponent can actually use their cheer dice to lower one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw you make during the duel. If you fail the second, you're now open to make the final check when you reach that condition. 
A final check is done when you're down to half your HP. It's a constitution saving throw against the arena DC. If you succeed, you have to keep making these every time you take damage. This is your character clinging to their last will to fight. If you fail this save, you lose the duel, and your fate is left to the Emperor's choice. That's it, I hope you like it. And remember to smash that subscribe button as if you were an Inigo Montoya and it was the six-fingered man who killed your father. Bye bye.